Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something that I've been interested in that's been happening on the internet recently, and that's authors behaving badly. Um, I'm going to knit or attempt to during this video because I need to get some knitting in. This is like not a new conversation that we're having, it's just the fact that these two instances that have happened really recently are like some of the most egregious that I can remember in recent time at least. I have forgotten everything, I have no way. Like this? No? Fuck, I've forgotten how to do a stitch. While I look up how to do a pearl stitch, we're going to talk about the Lauren Hoff situation. So this happened mostly on Twitter. Lauren Hoff, I guess, is this author who recently came out with a new book. Um, and she just completely put on blast these two reviewers who had reviewed her new book. I'm paraphrasing here, but I'll leave like relevant things down below so that you can see all of the screenshots for yourself. But she basically said that these two were on like a power trip, that they were losers and that nobody cared what they thought and shit like that. She then like went back and forth on her statement a few times. At first she was like, oh, I was high when I tweeted that. And then she was like, saying that she was sticking up for authors and saying what all of them were all secretly thinking. And I'm like, pick a side. <laughs> Hearing that, you must think like, oh wow, these reviews must have been like really bad for her to get so upset about them. They gave her four and a half stars, both of them. They both talked in their reviews about how much they liked the book, but apparently this wasn't good enough for Lauren. And you can probably imagine what happened next. A bunch of people went onto her page on Goodreads and bombed the book with one star reviews. I'm pretty sure it's sitting at like one and a half stars on Goodreads right now. And I don't really condone like rating books that you haven't read in general, even if the author is being a dick. But I also don't know what Lauren Hoff was expecting to happen. Did she think that like everyone was going to rally behind her and say, oh my god, yes, Lauren, you're fighting the good fight standing up to those nasty reviewers. Grr. No. <laughs> now, you probably only heard about this situation if you're a part of the book community. Like if you're someone that follows booktube, maybe you heard about this. But this next situation is something that's kind of like much bigger than that because it involves Gabby Hanna, who's like one of the most subscribed to and talked about creators on the platform. Uh, and she similarly went on not just a Twitter tirade, but a tirade across pretty much all platforms where she was first just like taking issue with reviewers in general, saying that none of these people understood her work and what she was doing and how she was like tackling all of these heavy subject matters and that they just didn't get it because they couldn't understand a neurodivergent brain. And first of all, very bold of her to assume that everyone who had like negatively critiqued her book is neurotypical. Like, how do you know that? <laughs> Also, she then like singled out this one reviewer who's another creator on the platform, Rachel Oates, and Rachel had made like some videos on Gabby's poetry books in the past, and Gabby uh, just like went on this huge rant calling Rachel a narcissistic bitch and an abuser, among uh, various other things. And the crime that Rachel did was critique her book and not like it, I guess. And apparently not liking Gabby's books makes you a bully. I don't know, I didn't know that. Like, again, if you just watch or read, like, from Gabby on the situation, you would think that Rachel was, like, this horrendous person who was making fun of Gabby and insulting her and everything like that. But when you watch her videos, they're very, like, calm, level-headed academic critiques. She talks a lot about like writing devices and 
different forms of poetry and all that and just like dissects the poem. She never directly says, oh, Gabby is a horrible person because I don't like her poetry, you know? <laughs> you know, Gabby said that she doesn't care what Rachel thinks because Rachel is just this person who's not a published author like her and so that she doesn't think that she understands art enough to critique her work. I don't need to tell you guys that, you know, you don't have to be a published author to review a book. I have reviewed many books on my channel and on Goodreads and I have not published a thing. If Gabby doesn't want to take Rachel's criticisms, that's fine. Like, authors can do whatever they like, but your craft is going to suffer, as evidenced by a lot of people giving similar critiques to Gabby's second book that they gave to her first one, because it's very similar uh, the things that are wrong with it. And you know, if the only people who were allowed to review books were published authors, the publishing industry would just like collapse in on itself. Because authors and books in general rely on reviewers talking about them. The success of your book is dictated entirely through reviews. Gabby is only able to put out a second book because enough people bought, reviewed, and talked about her first book. Now, even though, like, both of these situations are pretty different, I think they have, like, some common ground. One is that, obviously, both of these authors, like, their books are very personal to them. Lauren Hoff's book is like a non-fiction book of essays about her growing up in and then surviving a sex cult. And Gabby Hanna has said how, you know, so much of her poems is about like her struggles with mental health and other subject matter and things like that. And I totally understand why someone would be defensive of that. Anytime you write anything and put it out for other people to read, you're basically like tearing off a piece of your soul and offering it up for other people to judge. And when people say like not great things about it, that can hurt. I'm not denying that Gabby was probably upset about some of the critiques that she got. But, like, here is the thing, you lose all control of the narrative as soon as you publish that book for other people to read and charge them money for it, you know? Like, if I'm just sitting here knitting and someone peeks over my shoulder and says, oh, I think you should do this differently, I think that could be better if you did it like this, then that would be one thing because I'm just doing this for myself. But if I was to, you know open a knitting shop and charge people money, then that would be an entirely different thing. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that if you are like very sensitive and very attached to your work, maybe you shouldn't be putting it out for other people to read, you know? Like, as soon as that book is out there, you don't exist anymore. Like, the author is dead. Even if Gabby or Lauren or whoever intended for all of these deep messages to be attached to their work. It doesn't matter because you're not there peeking over someone's shoulder as they're reading your book, like explaining the significance of every single line. You know, people are going to read it and interpret it as they please. And that's just part of the game. That's just literature, baby. Also, another thing to just keep in mind is that reviewers don't owe you shit. You are not entitled to a positive review. <laughs> Someone says that your book is poop, you're just gonna have to deal with that. So I guess in conclusion to all of that, don't go after reviewers because it's gonna reflect poorly on you and your publisher and it's just gonna attach this like negative connotation to your work that wouldn't be there otherwise. Secondly, not everyone who critiques you is an abuser. When people like just so casually throw around such ter serious terms like that, it bothers me because it just like takes away all of the meaning behind like a really serious accusation. You know, if someone steps on my foot, I'm not going to call them 
a narcissistic abuser. <laughs> like, let's not make light of a serious thing. Another thing to remember is that not everything is a personal attack. If someone is critiquing your work, they are doing just that. They're critiquing your work. They're not criticizing you as a person. Not everything is so personal. And I understand that when you're like a public figure and you're someone who has probably had to deal with a lot of people giving you personal attacks, I can understand why you would maybe be a little bit defensive, but you can't carry that over into your professional life because it's just not the way to go about things. I guess at the end of the day, my uh, message is just stop it. Get some help. <laughs> Anyways, I've managed to make it through one row of stitches, so I guess we'll just call it there for today. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye, guys, and remember, stay sane on that internet. Bye!